All right, hi, we're gonna show you a little bit of how to use these in-ear monitors. Just wanna point out the, these are very nice in-ear monitors. So you're welcome to buy some of your own if you want, but these are in the $100 price range. We put a good investment in getting something nice because we want everybody to hear the music in good quality. It's really important that we take good care of them because of that. Two safety rules, one of them is always keep these off the ground because that would be one very expensive step. <laughs> The second one is before you move away from your P16 unit, which we'll show you those in a minute, always remember to unplug from the unit or you'll pull the stand over and it'll slam on the ground and that's really bad too. So just two things to remember. The location of the in-ears, I'll show you first and I'll have the camera kind of zoom in on this. This is where we store our stuff. So when you come in to practice, you'll grab the drawer down here that is you. So if you're vocal number one, you'll pull that out, unzip the pack, and you pull it out. It's just the, the in-air monitors that you see right here. And you put that back in the drawer. And then you'll also need some ear buds. The first time that you come in, you'll pick whether your ear canal size is small, medium, or large. You'll get a set of tips out. I recommend these foam ones, trying them first. They're a little higher quality than there's also some that are plastic. If you don't like the foam ones, you can try the plastic ones out. After you've gotten those picked out and you're done, where your earbuds will normally be is in all of these names here. So you'll have your name up here and you'll be able to just put your earbuds in your inner drawer. There's also cleaning tools down here. It's labeled cleaning. Wearing your in-ear monitors the way you do that is down the back of your shirt. So take the cable and put it down the back of your shirt. And that actually helps the cable to not pull out of your ear quite as much and it just looks more professional. Some of the, the ladies I know have talked about, they were wearing a dress or something. It might be kind of hard to be able to put it down the back. And a couple suggestions I would have for that is either having something to clip it onto the back of your shirt with like this is like super huge, but they make smaller ones, something like that. Or some of the musicians were putting the plug in their pocket if they had a pocket, just so the cord doesn't like pull, it wants to pull out of your ears if you don't, if you just kind of leave it hanging. So on the in-ear monitors here, you'll take your ear tips and you just stick them on. So when you're done, you'll pull these back off to put them in your drawer with your name on them. And you probably can't even really see it here, but on each of these, one of them has a blue dot and one of them has a red dot on it. Red stands for right ear. So if you just remember red stands for right, you'll know that's the one that goes in your right ear. These will go over the top of your ears. You mash it all up, just like an ear plug, and uh, you stick it straight in your ear and it just kind of all goes in right there. And you'll feel the foam ones kind of expand so that they stick inside your ear so they don't fall out. And there's also a, uh, the wire up here is kind of tough so you can bend it around the top of your ear to help it uh, hold in place a little bit better. There's also an adjustment piece behind the head. If you need it, you can slide this thing up so that your wire doesn't tug so much behind your head. A lot of people don't necessarily need that, but it's there if you need it. So you put them both in your ears and then you can't hear anything at all. It's perfect. So then you have to hook it into the, into the system. All right, so to wrap this cable up when you're done, usually use about two or three fingers and just wrap it like that. Don't cinch it tight. That's not good for it, but just wrap it right up and it'll go in the in the black case and just zip it up and put it back in the drawer where you had it from. You'll plug in to the system right here with your ears and you'll be able to control it from the P16 unit. So this is the P16 system over here and we now have complete control over exactly what we want to hear which is extremely awesome. We don't have to keep asking the sound guy and bugging him. There's also almost no stage volume because of this, and it results in a much better sound quality for the congregation. It's an adjustment getting used to creating your own mix, and a couple of overall rules for creating your own mix are always start out mixing with both of your ears in, 
because if you only have one in your ear, you're going to mix stuff at twice the volume that you could or that you should, and you're gonna damage your hearing. So always make sure you have both ears in when you're adjusting your volume levels. The second thing is I tell people to always start out as quiet as possible and as simple as possible. So as quiet as possible, I usually go for keeping, like if I'm turning my guitar up, I keep it as quiet as I can where I feel like I can still kind of feel the music because you need to be able to feel it at a good level to connect with it but I don't necessarily put it up as loud as if my guitar was the only thing that I was putting in my mix. Because what happens if I do that, if I keep putting everything as loud as I want it, volume actually accumulates, um, especially when it's so close to your eardrum. And by the time you're done, it's gonna feel much louder than what you expected because each thing you turned up kind of bumped the overall volume in your ears up. So try to keep it as quiet as you can while you can still feel it and try to keep your mix as simple as possible. So I would recommend only putting the things in your ear first that you absolutely need. So if I'm a vocalist, I, I need to hear the lead vocal and I need to hear uh, the other person, the other background vocalist. I'll turn them up a little bit. I probably need to hear the acoustic guitar to follow the rhythm and maybe a little bit of the drums. And then I would probably stop there for a second. Get to where you're comfortable, where you feel like you can hear well and you're connecting with the band. And then you can add a little bit of some of the other things into the mix, uh, whatever you need at that point. An overview of the P16 system, I'll have the camera zoom in over here on that. We have the master volume level right here, which I recommend you running that at about three quarters or so. If you run it too low, you might run into a channel that you've maxed out your volume on the other volume knob. This is the limiter. I recommend running that also at about three quarters or so. The limiter just keeps, if a really loud sound or a snap were to come through the ears for some reason, like a channel got unplugged or something, the limiter stops you from hearing that so your ears don't get damaged. But if the limiter is turned up too far to the left, it can limit too much. So the drummer starts getting really loud and all of a sudden now you don't hear the drums at all because he got too loud. If an instrument starts just cutting out on you, that might be the limiter. So turn it a little bit further to the right side to stop that from happening. Here are the channels that you'll select for your mix. This is the 16 channels we have on here. So lead vocal would usually be the uh, worship leader. When you click on a channel, it'll turn red. If there's a signal, coming through a channel. You can see I'm tapping the one that's extra one. You'll see a green. I'm hitting a microphone right there. And that will make extra one light up because that's what this microphone is through. So you can see if a signal is coming through the channel, it's green. And if you have selected a channel, it's red. So I'll select the channel that I want. I want to turn up the worship leader's vocal right here. And then the volume knob is right here. And I just adjust that to wherever I want it. And then when I'm happy with that, I can move on to whatever I need next. Let's say I'm in vocal one here. So I'll select that channel, turn the volume up to where I want it, and just move on to whatever's next. For vocalists, we have a reverb channel. This adds some reverb to just all of the vocalists. A vocal with no reverb on it at all can feel kind of dry and kind of weird. So you can just kind of mess around with that. Most people have been keeping it at about two dots or so. Just add a little bit of reverb so the vocal sounds natural. And then we also have an ambient mic channel that helps you to hear the congregation and the sounds out in the room a little bit. So other channels are just kind of regular. Keys is keys, acoustic guitar is the worship leader's acoustic, electric guitar, bass, drums. And then we have some extra channels because we have different elements different weeks. We might have a violin one week, we might have an acoustic guitar, and we'll just kind of have to let you know what those channels are. Click track, the preacher, or anybody using a mic, this usually works. If Keith's up here doing the host moment, you can hear him through that. You can hear the pastor and the communion. When they give the communion, you can hear it through there. This last channel is the sound guy so you can hear him talking to you during practice or if he needs to tell anybody anything. So always leave that up to where you can hear him pretty decent. On every individual channel, you have the ability to pan that channel to into your left or right ear. So if I wanna put 
two or three of the channels more toward my left ear to kind of give me some space. I can move it over there more towards the left just a little bit. If I want to pan something else toward the right, I can just kind of pan it over like that. If I want to put it back to the middle, I can just push that button and it'll put them right back in the middle. We also have EQ per channel. So this is not the overall mix, but it's actually each channel that you can EQ. So if I want to EQ the acoustic guitar, if I want a little more high end in it, I can turn the treble up there a little bit. The mid range is actually got a sweep on it. So if I want to turn the mid up by three quarters, turn boost the volume in the mids, I can pick where in the mids this frequency range thing I can go to the low mids here and maybe bring it down a little more the volume of that low mid right there and then you know bass of course so that's EQ per channel I could do that on acoustic and then go over to my vocal do the same thing we also have where you can save your settings we normally will not have to save settings but if we're in here practicing for some reason and somebody else was gonna come in after us like brigade up here you have recall and store so if you want to store something you just hold that store button down and it's showing me I'm on channel number seven it turns all of these into a storage channel so if I wanted to store something in channel 16 I would click it once and click it again and now I've saved those settings that I had on here and they'll come up when I recall them which is the same process pretty much you just hold down the recall button and you select the channel you want to recall and it pulls it up for you. We also have a solo button. If you're just wanting to hear one item, you can click solo, it's blinking now. Now I'm just hearing number five to see what is actually coming out of just that channel. And I can click off of that and I'm out of it. Or mute groups. So if I wanna mute certain channels, I click mute and anything I select will be muted and then click off of it and it'll keep the ones muted that I had selected. That's the basic overview of the P16 and uh, that's it.